How's it going you guys? So today in this video I want to talk a little bit about anxiety. So most people that experience anxiety or depression or something like this, they often, uh, not everyone hopefully, but a lot of people, especially these days, it's very common because we know that doctors are wanting to push medications and drugs upon us as if they're the only savior. Um, many people act as if and believe as if anxiety and depression and these types of things are chronic diseases. Um, and that's unfortunate because when you believe that your health problem is chronic, it discourages you from finding a permanent solution or what some people might call a cure. If you believe that you're helpless or, or that there is no cure, so to speak, then you're never going to find it, okay? Uh, another thing is if you believe that you're helpless or you believe that there is no cure for your condition, then you could literally be doing all the right things that would normally cure something, but with mental illness, the placebo effect is very powerful. And in terms of anxiety, uh, one of the main causes of anxiety is that people focus way too much on their anxiety. And um, anxiety, depression, and these kinds of things are some of these, these are some of the hardest conditions to get over because the more we focus on it and the more we attach ourselves to anxiety and anxious feelings, the worse they become and the longer in life you will experience these things, the more often they will occur, etc. Um, in fact, and, and, and I mean I know this for sure because I experience extreme mental issues all of my life um, until a couple years ago when I finally conquered the majority of them. I live an amazing life now. I was on all sorts of pharma pharmaceutical drugs growing up, okay? In fact, you know, from age eight all the way until age 21, I was on pharmaceutical drugs, okay? Until I decided to turn my life around because I knew the entire time I didn't need them. It's just that people forced them on me. Um, so it, it's very hard getting off medications. And but But the most important thing is for you to realize that Anxiety and a lot of mental illness, including depression and even anger, and in some cases, even bipolar disorder, not the severe cases, but a lot of bipolar, has some simple fixes, okay? A lot of it is mindset. A lot of it is that we focus too much on our anxiety or on our anger or on our depression. And a lot of people who are experiencing this, they can't think outside of anxiety or whatever condition they're experiencing. So they're constantly, um, you know, they think like, oh, like, yeah, it's easy for you to say, but I have anxiety. And if you knew anything about anxiety, it's like the worst thing ever. Um, it's very hard not to focus on anxiety because, you know, every time I go out of my house, um, I'm constantly worried that something bad is going to happen. So I'm always focused on it because it's always there. But the interesting thing is you feel whatever you focus on. And if you focus on something else, in fact, you can literally force yourself to start to change your thoughts. And in some cases, this is unhealthy, but in a lot of cases with mental illness, um, the reason why people experience these things in the long term is, is because they can't change their train of thought. So a solution, a solution for a lot of people is to force yourself to focus on better things. And over time, not immediately, but over time, if you really, really commit to this, you will change your thoughts and your feelings will change. And for a lot of people, this alone is the key, okay? Um, and, at, and at a certain point, you're going to have to do this anyway, especially if you want to not just solve your anxiety, but live your best life. 
disciplining your mind is the number one part of this, okay? And the main reason why most people do not recover from anxiety, the reason why anxiety and depression is not temporary for most people and why it lasts forever is because like over 80%, probably more than that, 90% of society is stubborn. They're attached to who they are right now with no hope for who they could become. And because people are scared of disciplining their mind because it's too hard, okay? Nobody wants to go outside their comfort zone. And I know anxiety is uncomfortable, but changing Changing is even more uncomfortable, and that is why people don't change. And, all, and also just because they don't believe that they can change, right? So you've got to change your mindset, change your focus, and you've got to heal your belief system before you can heal anything else, okay? So uh, here are a couple of things that you can do to balance your neurology, okay? Because the mindset and the psychology is one thing, okay? But your physiology is another. Most people don't really have like something like uh, hereditarily wrong with their brain, okay? Just because your mom was depressed or anxious and just because your grandpa killed himself, it does not mean that it is genetic, okay? The vast majority of human beings that have lived for the past hundred years the majority of people living in our society are on the edge of insanity all the time. I'm telling you that. It's, it's just most people are. The same thing goes for diabetes and heart disease, okay? Uh, most people's uncles and somebody in your family is going to have heart disease or diabetes. Is it because it's genetic or is it because everybody is consuming sugar, high fructose corn syrup, uh, processed flours, processed foods, hydrogenated oils. These are all the primary causes of disease. Deep fried foods, french fries, okay? Chicken, uh, fried chicken, okay? These are, without a doubt, the causes of these diseases. Processed meats, etc. How many people do you know in, in your life or in your family, how many people do you know that do not consume any of these things, okay? The majority of, of, of people in our society consume uh, the, the things, the very things that cause these diseases, okay? Just like the very, the vast majority of people in our society for the past 50 years have been per partaking in the habits that cause anxiety and depression. So it should be no surprise if your uncle or your aunt or your grandpa or your great grandpa had you know, depression, anxiety, heart disease, diabetes, okay? It's not genetic, it's habits. There have been experiments done on people that lived in uh, med the Mediterranean, for example, and part of their family migrated over to America and the others stayed in the Mediterranean. And the people who stayed in the Mediterranean continued on with their traditional habits of their culture, which produces great health. It's one of the reasons why uh, there's two blue zones in the Mediterranean, you know, centenarians, people live past 100 very frequently there. It's because of their healthy habits. But then the same family line moved to America and developed chronic diseases. Their children developed chronic diseases, okay? The only thing that changed is, like their genetics didn't change, okay? Actually, epigenetics, your, your body and your physiology changes depending on the food you eat and your environment. What I'm saying is it's not genetic, okay? Because, you know, people from the same family change their eating habits and their, and their country, and then they develop sickness and illness. But their family is still living in, in their healthy country or whatever, doing their healthy things or healthy habits. They don't have disease, okay? Prime example that it's not genetic. So you've got to stop thinking that anxiety and depression and all these illnesses, you gotta stop thinking that they're genetic, okay? Doctors want you to think they're genetic, okay? How, how are doctors going to have any patients at all if all their patients are uh, healing their diseases with psychology books, self-help books, and um, nutrition? If everybody understood nutrition, and really herbal medicine and supplements are very helpful, 
and everybody understood psychology, then we wouldn't need therapists, we wouldn't need psychologists, we wouldn't need doctors, okay? But these, but doctors and psychologists are very, very helpful. It just depends on who you go to, okay? If they're trying to put you on drugs, man, there's a problem with that, okay? Most of our society, they, they can't, they can't, they can't accept that, but it's, it's the way it is. It's money. Um, so, what are some things that we can do to change our physiology, okay? What are these habits, right, that, that we can partake in that can improve our anxiety, uh, depression, symptoms, and our health in general? So, first of all, you want to remove coffee and any kind of isolated caffeine supplement or pre-workout or anything like that, okay? So, coffee has a lot of benefits and um, I was drinking coffee for quite a while until I realized that it was causing me to be much more stressed, it, like literally in my physiology. Coffee literally causes physical stress, okay, in your body, okay? Um, you are more, much more likely to cuss at people and freak out and road rage if you drink coffee before you hit the road than if you weren't to drink coffee or to drink something else instead, okay? So instead of coffee, you want to drink either green tea or even black tea or yerba mate, okay? So when it comes to caffeine, listen, it's not the caffeine that you want to worry about, okay? Seriously. Coffee doesn't make you feel stressed because of the caffeine. It's because of the other nutrients that are found in coffee. Yes, there are other alkaloids, stimulatory compounds found in coffee, okay? Besides caffeine, other xanthins, okay? But, you know, like theobromine, uh, etc. But it's not that. There's also uh, co caffeic acid or caffergic uh, I probably didn't spell, uh, pronounce that right, but there are other compounds in coffee that are not found in green tea, black tea, etc. And these compounds in black tea increase cortisol much more than if you were to get it from somewhere else. It's not just caffeine, okay? And this is part of why isolated compounds, like drugs, this is why pharmaceutical drugs uh, and caffeine supplements and these things have harmful side effects, okay? It's not because of one compound, okay? It's because these things are isolated nutrients, okay? Pharmaceutical drugs are uh, originally, at least until they can synthetically create them in labs, they take a nutrient that's naturally found in plants and they isolate it from a plant, okay? And when you isolate nutrients, it causes imbalance in the body, okay? Because plants, they don't just contain one nutrient, they contain you know, hundreds upon thousands of nutrients that work together in synergy to create a positive effect in the body, unless the plant is poisonous, of course. Um, and so when you isolate a vitamin or, you know, even a mineral or an amino acid, but that, that's a little bit safer. When you isolate caffeine from plants, when you isolate, um, you know, like uh, Adderall or something like that, you know, cocaine, you know, when you isolate these things, or nicotine, when you isolate these things from the original plant, um, and then you concentrate them, it creates problems, okay? It can create a positive effect, that's what the whole idea behind, behind pharmaceutical drugs, but the majority of the effect is gonna be pretty, pretty unpleasant, okay? You really, when it comes to like natural versus artificial okay like that that's really meaningless it's not about how natural something is it's about um, what it is and what it does in the body when you isolate nutrients they cause negative effects okay they 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 can usually will cause problems in the body imbalances okay you can't solve an imbalance with more imbalance you must use balanced compounds to create more balance okay Really, it's like fighting fire with fire. So remove isolated caffeine supplements and you'll feel much better. Uh, coffee is a whole, it's, a, it's basically like coffee bean juice, if that makes sense. Because, you know, the coffee bean, is, it's, it's a juice made from a coffee bean, basically. It's a tea made from coffee bean. Um, 
the problem is that there's nutrients in coffee that causes people to be stressed and jittered. Okay, so remove that. It's not the caffeine. That's my point. It's not the caffeine. Now, tea, green tea, okay, does contain caffeine. But it has a completely different effect from fucking coffee, okay? There's a reason why I go into such detail when I explain things, and this is why. Okay, because people are blah, 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 like they don't have a clue. They just know all the watered down, um, you know, nonsense from mainstream health advice. Okay, it's very complex. That's why you gotta. I, that's why I talk so so long about certain things. Green tea has obviously everybody knows has theanine, which increases GABA in the brain, which counteracts the negative effects of caffeine. It also contains antioxidant, uh, antioxidants, polyphenols like uh, cachetins um, and other flavonoids and plant compounds that have a positive effect on oxidative stress, okay? It literally does the opposite of coffee and it does the opposite of what people think caffeine is meant for. So I can tell you right now, I literally just had some very high quality organic Sencha uh, green tea. It's, it's pretty expensive though, it's like uh, $200 a pound where I live, uh, so imported from China. Um, but I had this about three hours ago actually, and I still feel pretty good from it. Um, and I made it in the most like unaccepted way. I made it in a coffee maker, but it produced amazing tea even though it's so expensive. Why do I make a coffee maker? Don't ask me. Okay, Chinese people would hate me for that. But it makes you feel really calm, makes you feel really relaxed, okay? Instead of starting your day with coffee, start your day with green tea, okay? Um, you will feel very relaxed if you have a good tea and you make it properly. And I have videos on how to make tea properly. Changing out coffee for green tea is one of the most powerful things you can do. There's lots of bloggers and shit. People use tea bags and stuff. Look, I recommend a high quality green tea, okay? Loose leaf. Uh, the other thing you can do, and this is what I personally do in the morning, is I use yerba mate, okay? Yerba mate is an amazing beverage from South America, from places like Peru, Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, <laughs> and it's fantastic. Um, a lot of people don't believe it has caffeine in it. They think it has some other compound that's similar to caffeine because it doesn't make you feel jittery like coffee. It makes you feel calm, makes you want to talk to people, makes you feel focused and relaxed rather than focused and jittery, okay? It's badass. Um, I love it. It makes you feel real happy. It's great. And, and again, like I literally just take five tablespoons of yerba mate and there's a lot of caffeine supposedly in these leaves. There's, and, and per tablespoon, there should be about, um, I read something like 80 to 100 milligrams of caffeine per tablespoon. So I'm, I'm using five tablespoons. So that's almost like four to 500 milligrams of caffeine supposedly. And I don't feel jittery, man. Now, I'd love to see you try taking 500 milligrams of isolated caffeine supplements. There's no way that you could do that and say, yeah, bro, I feel calm and focused. It's not about caffeine, okay? That's a problem people have, okay? Your mate is badass. And the reason why I bring this up is because I, I feel like it has amazing anti-anxiety um, uh, effects. Like, literally, I feel so much calmer. I feel zen when I drink green tea and yerba mate. I feel great. You know, it's like you're super calm, but at the same time, you've got energy. It's fucking amazing, okay? Absolutely. And I can tell you there's a reason why, um, you know, Chinese monks have been, well, at least, I, you know, uh, my Sifu backs this up. Um, but I, basically, like, green uh, monks, okay, you hear a lot about Shaolin monks from China um, drinking green tea uh, traditionally um, all day long sipping on it of course making it in a special way and it caught and there's a reason why you know they're all about meditation and zen uh, well i guess not these days but they they used to be about meditation and zen and uh being in the moment and focus as well as physical training 
and mental training, okay? If you drink coffee, you're not gonna be able to do all the things Shaolin uh, uh, temple monks do, okay? And I know this because I was in a traditional Chinese Shaolin Kung Fu school for four to five years, it was four years. Um, so, you know, green tea is very, very powerful as an anti-anxiety. I, I highly recommend it. And your mate is great too. You should totally look that up. Absolutely powerful. Another thing you should really do, and this is this is a, probably a primary importance, along with the other things I mentioned, is um, look, okay, if you have anxiety or any kind of problem at all, and you haven't thought about how your, your, your diet is influencing how you feel, you're crazy, you know? Especially if you think like, oh, uh, anxiety cannot be cured, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it's a health problem, it's a, it's a disease. You know, you think that and you've never really tried changing your diet, you're crazy. Like, what's wrong with you? It's, it's insane, like, I can't believe it. Okay, of course, I've been reading about this stuff and I healed my own anxiety for a long time. So uh, I guess because I'm so much more experienced with this, then it just seems crazier to me. But uh, here's the thing. So um, it's not about, you know, losing weight. It's not about, you know, just eating healthy in general, right? It's not like following the government guidelines, you know? what everyone thinks is healthy, okay? Look, the majority of the advice that you're given by mainstream health gurus or, or doctors and stuff like that, the majority of most people's advice in the mainstream is false, okay? It's nonsense. A lot of it is, is counterproductive, okay? So, uh, I have many videos on how to eat healthy, okay? You should definitely check them out. Most importantly, the main cause of illness, I have a video on that. Um, but Overall, you want to completely eliminate um, flour, like white flowers and flowers in general. You want to completely eliminate sugar, isolated sugar, okay? It, with nutrition, it goes for the same thing. The farther away from a whole food, the worse off it gets. The more processed the sugar is, the worse it gets. Now, if you eat fruit, that's, that's fine, okay? For the most part, and for most people, but not everybody. Fruit is fine, you know, whole fruit, um, you know, fruits, vegetables, uh, and, and meat, essentially, animal flesh is fine, it's great, okay? And if you're vegan, if you're not eating meat, and you experience anxiety or depression, I'm telling you right now, there's many people who felt just like you, and they quit veganism, they started eating animal flesh and felt a whole lot better, okay? In fact, in fact, there are a lot of plant foods that you may not realize you are intolerant to or even allergic to, okay? And there's a lot of plant foods, especially grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. These things can, can trigger especially depression but anxiety in a lot of people. For me, I know that when I eat a large amount, when I eat beans, when I eat um, uh, whole grains, a lot of plant foods cause problems for me, and I was experiencing horrible problems, which you can watch my videos on, for a long time. And when I remove these hard to digest foods from my diet, it's like a gigantic cloud of rain just like lifted off me. It was absolutely fantastic. So I'm telling you right now, <laughs> you need to you need to eat animal flesh, okay? And if you have if you really think you have trouble digesting animal flesh, you probably have a uh, stomach acid problem. You probably, uh, if you have acid reflux, if you feel like meat just sits in your stomach, that's probably because you have an acid, you've been taking antacids, or you have some kind of stomach acid problem for whatever reason, probably because of your because of faulty diet, okay? So you need to uh, consume raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar, about a tablespoon, 15 to 20 minutes before eating, and over the course of a week, that should solve your stomach acid issue and you should be able to consume meat a lot better. Anyway, just stay away from processed junk and eat a whole foods diet in general. Okay, make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need. Eggs are amazing. In fact, fish eggs are the best. Fish roe are amazing. 
Um, I have plenty of videos on that. This video is so long already. I don't want to get too deep into these things. So, um, eliminate all the processed junk and garbage, okay? Listen, blood sugar, blood sugar spikes and fluctuations is one of the most common, uh, one of the worst things for anxiety, one of the worst things for your mood and for your uh, energy levels, okay? If you have blood sugar fluctuations, you're fucked, okay? Like you will definitely have anxiety and depression and mood problems if you have blood sugar imbalances. I'm telling you right now, okay? That's one of the worst things for your mood, okay? If you're consuming candy, drinking soda, and you have anxiety and you wonder why, you're, you're crazy. Like, whoa, man. I have anxiety, uh, I drink a lot of soda and stuff. No one ever thinks about this, and it blows my mind. Like, of course you have anxiety, bro. Your, your blood sugar's all over the place, okay? That's one of the, the biggest symptoms of low blood sugar. And I myself, you know, had to solve that issue myself. Um, so, and, and also a lot of drugs and pharmaceutical drugs and medications can actually make anxiety worse. But that's a whole other topic for, you know, another time. Um, another thing is dairy, okay? Uh, it's not even just lactose, it's the casein protein. Now, of course, there have been studies uh, in particular. See, I don't, I don't think the China study is, is a great, credible source for anything, but there is one rat study that they talk about in the China study where it actually shows casein protein can accelerate tumor growth. Now, casein protein has a lot of problems for a lot of people. Um, and part of the reason why is because most of the milk consumed these days, most dairy is actually from hybridized cows and even cloned cows, believe it or not, uh, these days. It's very scary stuff when you read into it. And I can just tell you from experience, um, when I consume cow milk, I have bad mood swings. Okay, I have <laughs> really bad outrageous outrages and like I can't control my emotions it's really fucked okay I freak out over dumb things it's insane I have bad mood swings bipolar manic depression well mainly just mood swings uh, where I go angry and sad when I consume dairy okay cow cow milk specifically okay it's very common to, to have mood problems when with, with dairy so remove that then goat milk for some reason goat and sheep milk I didn't notice uh, the mood swings as much. In fact, I feel like a lot of my mood problems uh, cleared up when I you know, switched to goat and sheep milk. But it's very, very expensive, and I think it was still contributing to my problems either way. It's best just to remove dairy in general, okay? And soy milk's not a better alternative. There's really no excuse for having, you know, oh, I need, I need some type of milk, you know, in my food, blah, blah, blah. No, you don't. You don't need any substitutes. Just remove that. Um, soy milk, blah, blah, blah. Forget that, okay? Coconut, coconut milk should be okay. But in the morning, okay, in the morning, if you eat cereal, milk, and, and fruit, especially skim milk, and you have anxiety, you're crazy. Okay, again, you're just, you're just shooting yourself in the foot, okay? If you start your day off with primarily carbohydrates, like high carb, and you don't have any, like you don't have a significant amount of fat or protein in the morning, you're fucked. Like, you're, you're just hurting yourself, okay? Again, that's going to set yourself up for a whole day full of, of, of low energy and digestion problems, okay? Cereal and milk is the worst thing you can eat at any time of the day, but especially in the morning. Especially skim milk, okay? If you're drinking any kind of milk at all, it shouldn't be skim, okay? Remove that. Instead, what you should do is, you know, keep it light, but mainly protein and fat, okay? So what I do, and what I recommend most people do is eggs and maybe a little bit of protein in there, okay? Whole eggs. Egg whites is, is not good. Okay, you, there's nothing wrong with whole eggs, no matter what kind of vegan propaganda you've, you've run into. I have to make a bunch of videos on this, because again, it's a deep topic. 
but essentially two eggs in the morning, um, two whole eggs. Uh, I usually just cook it with a runny yolk. And you can, you can do like, um, okay, stay away from processed bacon, okay? If you get bacon at all, it, it should be uncured, no MSG, no nitrates, okay? Organic, if possible. Otherwise, otherwise, stay away from bacon, okay? Um, eggs, a little bit of fruit, you know, berries and uh, bananas, um, and then some olive oil on there, or even better would be whole olives or avocados, okay? And eat that in the morning, you know, with a little bit of berries and, and, may, and some tea and honey. With yerba mate and some honey, boom, you're fucking excellent. You're good, you know? That's what I do. I do that as soon as I wake up, and then I go and train real hard. I do some good exercise. I feel amazing. It doesn't really, you know, it's not too big of a meal, but the fat and the protein along with a little bit of fruit gives me all the nutrients I need, and I feel amazing for the entire day. Um, so that's a big, big thing is what you eat in the morning. Otherwise, alternatively, just don't eat breakfast. You could fast, okay? Intermittent fasting is great, and you'll notice uh, much better energy after about four weeks of doing it, or even right away sometimes. You'll feel better, have less anxiety, and your blood sugar will regulate over time. Okay, the best diet that I can just recommend right off the bat without going into details would be um, a paleo diet that allows potatoes and jasmine rice, okay? Sweet potatoes and carbs, okay? Also, the Bulletproof diet is great. Um, I like that, even though Dave Asprey, some of his information is a little messed up, and a lot of his stuff sounds like a, a great, a gigantic marketing com campaign. Bulletproof Diet's amazing for, for your brain power. Another book you can check out for um, curing anxiety with diet and nutrition and supplements is The Ultra Mind Solution by Dr. Mark Hyman. I find that to be very, very effective for most people. Um, and another thing is just, you know, consume food every three hours, okay? If you, if you go long periods of time without eating and you, and you wonder why you have anxiety, well, that's why. Because, you know, no matter what you're eating, unless you're going low carb or no carb and you do intermittent fasting, your body's going to crash after, you know, three hours of not eating. So make sure you're eating something every three hours, okay? Because you'll notice three hours, uh, two to three hours after eating, you have a weird, like, feeling like, fuck, you know, you're kind of edgy, stuff like that, I'm telling you, it works wonders, especially if you're an athlete, okay? You need to be eating frequently, every two hours. Don't listen to these people, oh, meal timing doesn't matter. It does, intermittent fasting is very powerful, and so is eating more frequently, okay? It really does. Um, it makes a world of difference in your energy levels, absolutely. Um, and don't eat big meals, because you'll feel like, horrible and sluggish. Okay, eat smaller meals more frequently. I'm telling you, it, it makes a huge difference. It's crazy. So there's some other things you can do. Uh, exercise. This is, again, is primary importance. You should be fine. You should be doing exercise every single day. Okay. Not too vigorous, but definitely not too light. Okay. Um, if you're new to exercise, you're going to have to start yourself slowly. I do have exercise videos. I have videos on what is the best exercise for health and longevity? Just search up my channel name along with exercise and you'll find those videos, okay? But the most important thing is to do something you enjoy. If I had to recommend one type of exercise that covers all bases and is good for anxiety, I would say join a martial arts class, okay? So meditation is very powerful, yoga is very powerful, and so is cardiovascular activity. Martial arts, if you do like, let's say, and, 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 you know, street defense martial arts and fighting martial arts are much different than for general health and curing anxiety. Something that covers all bases, including fighting, is a really, really good uh, traditional karate school. Now, karate, usually they teach point sparring, which is, an in, which is ineffective for real fighting for the most part, but it gives you some great skills you could use if you need them on the street. And... It teaches you katas, and it teaches you more flexibility. It has cardiovascular training. It has basic body weight calisthenics. Um, and kata can be used as a form of active meditation. I know a lot of karate practitioners that use this when they're stressed. It works wonders, okay? 
They're happiest people I've ever met, besides me. Yeah. So, karate's great, but you've got to be careful because a lot of schools suck. <laughs> um, another thing you can do is just pick up yoga. Um, it's great, you know, it, it improves your mobility, your flexibility. The thing is, it improves your stress and relaxation. Uh, running for about 20 minutes every single day is very powerful. You don't have to go all out. You don't have to exercise till failure. Just because you're blood pumping and move your body frequently. Okay, stretch, um, use a hot bath every single day, add some Epsom salts, some magnesium salts, make you feel amazing. You know, cold showers in the morning, absolutely fantastic. Hot cold hydrotherapy is very powerful. Um, meditation is very, very powerful. Any kind of meditation, okay? To meditation, you don't just have to sit down and stare at the wall for hours, okay? Meditation is just focusing your mind on one thing and forcing it to focus for an extended amount of time. Because most people, they're way too caught up in simulation, right? Facebook scrolling, that's horrible. Eliminate Facebook, by the way. Eliminate Facebook from your life. Eliminate porn from your life, okay? I'm telling you, these two things should have been one of the number one things I mentioned. Um, but all these things ruin our focus, it ruins our mind, and it causes anxiety and pressure in our lives. So removing um, those things and doing medit so these things are the opposite of meditation, right? Multitasking, uh, worried about drama, focusing on politics, all this shit ruins your brain, it ruins your, your, your concentration and your peace of mind. They're anti-meditation and they are anxiety. Okay, but that's all anxiety right there. All this drama, politics, Facebook. Remove that crap, okay? It's just killing you, okay? It doesn't matter what you think about politics, man. It's killing you, and you're not really doing the world any good by stressing out over nonsense, seriously. Um, meditation's powerful, okay? You can, you can literally, running can be a form of active meditation. Um, you, fo you can go out in nature, and literally just set your timer for 20 minutes and force yourself to focus on the sounds in your environment. Listen to the birds, listen to the cars in the near or in the far distance, you know, listen to people jogging by at the park, you know, I'm talking about the park. Um, anywhere you are though, you can sit down and you can listen to the sounds around you. I hear the fan behind me. I hear my rice steaming. It's been like, damn, almost 40 minutes of this video and I've had rice cooking this whole time. It's probably burnt by now. My goji berry tea is steaming. <laughs> um, I hear a lot of things in my environment right now. And it forces you to focus on the present moment. And that is what meditation is all about. And it's very powerful for removing stress and anxiety from your life. Um, you know, you should definitely sit down and reflect on all the, uh, your career, reflect on your relationships, reflect on all the things that might be stressing you, right? Like if you're always complaining about something, you need to start doing something about it, okay? You need to break up with whatever person is causing you stress. If you have money problems, you really need to just dive into those and just solve them. Create a side project, create side profit. If you don't like your job, man, either you are the problem and you're complaining too much, which is a main reason why people have anxiety. It's part of your personality that's just gonna make you stress no matter what you do. Stop complaining um, and just you can change your job if you need to. Change the people you're around. Surround yourself with positive people. And force yourself to repeat positive mantras all throughout the day. Something that makes you feel good, okay? Something that just feels good. Like, I love my life, I love my life, I love my life, I love my life, okay? Because anxiety is all in your mind and it's all in your body. You need to exercise to remove the stress. You need to meditate to remove the stress. You need to eat good food so your body can build healthy cells, which means happiness. Surround yourself with good people, man, because bad people will make you feel bad. And you know, I mean, this is all that it is. And this is what I've done, and this is what most people do, and this is how you just have a great life in general. So, you know, 
The, if you want me to explain anything in further detail, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you've gone this far in this video, I congratulate you. Let me know down in the comments if you've gotten this far in the video. Tell me what you think. Subscribe for more. Check out all my other videos on anxiety and nutrition and, and health and healing. Um, and I love you guys, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.